In today's video, I'm going to be going over the last bit of finishing touches and details from my modifications that I've done on my Arcade 1UP Head-to-Head -head Street Fighter 2 cocktail cabinet. All right, we'll just start at the top. As you can see, I've replaced the graphics. I have a custom vinyl graphic kit that I had printed by Mitsa Profit. If you want to get any artwork done by him, I'll put a product link down the video description box below so you can get in touch with him. Did a great job. I sent him the design, a very simple, basic design. I just put a couple of my favorite arcade company logos along the sides, and I've got it mirrored on the opposite in there. Went with the all gloss black finish on top and then on the control deck I also went with glossy black as well. No logos or anything else. The materials that Mitsu use, high quality materials, top, top notch stuff, very happy with how it turned out. Looks great in my opinion. Uh, the only downside is with bright glossy black of course it shows every little smudge, dirt, speck, fingerprint or anything like that so definitely had to make sure that I wiped underneath the protective cover down a bajillion times with a microfiber cloth to make sure it was spotless before I put the plexiglass overlay back on top. That way I didn't have any specks of dirt or hair or any kind of random particles floating around inside between the top layer and the plexi. And for anybody that didn't watch the previous mod video that I did on this, uh, for the control deck I added some new buttons and replaced the buttons and joysticks. Went with HAP competition buttons and joystick. Uh, I've just got a random hat button here in the back that works as my back button anytime I want to back out of a game and I just repurposed the old arcade one-up mushy cruddy buttons for my start and select coin buttons so works out great not reusing the plexiglass overlay just because I knew this vinyl was going to be a high quality print so I don't really need a protective overlay now that I've got a high quality vinyl on top of my control deck and we have the upgraded 20 inch monitor as well this is everyone's favorite the Dell 2007 FP monitor originally I had bought a 24 inch LCD screen that I was going to put in here as the monitor unfortunately I just didn't like the way it looked as a widescreen monitor monitor it had a lot of dead space when I played the horizontal games even if I used the mirrored cocktail mode for those horizontal games there was just a lot of dead space on that widescreen monitor so I opted not to use it instead I went with the Dell 2007 FP monitor to install the monitor itself what I did was I just cut out the old existing 17 inch monitor to do so I got my circular saw out and I did plunge cuts in the middle of all four sections and once I had those plunge cuts started I came in with my jigsaw and I simply just cut the straight lines and removed the old 17 inch monitor. Once that was done I took off the back housing of the Dell monitor and then I took off the front bezel that way I could have it sit smooth that front bezel sticks up quite a bit so if I was going to try to install this monitor with that front bezel number one the screen would look recessed and I didn't really like the way that looked and number two it wouldn't sit flush underneath the plexi top and the table itself so with those removed it now sits flush inside to hold everything inside and together what I did was I used some corner braces that you can get at any hardware store and these corner braces I have on all four corners shaped like an L and it holds the corners up and I also did a couple ones as little triangles across the midsection just for some added stability but it works really well the only thing I still haven't decided if I want to paint the silver monitor bezel area if I want to paint it black or what I want to do right now I'm undecided you know I kind of kind of like the way it looks with a gray just because it contrasts but finishing with the all black thing that probably wouldn't be bad either so let me know in the comments down below if I should paint that trim part black or leave it silver let me know underneath the table itself I also cut a larger hole for the power cords to go into the power outlet adapter and I also added some USB quiet fans these help circulate some air inside the cabinet as well as push out hot air outside the bottom of the cocktail cabinet these are super cheap very easy plug in to the computer with the USB port and they are super silent so my previous mod video you saw that I was running the big box front end while well, I've since switched it to CoinOps Arcadia 6 and I've actually customized CoinOps Arcadia 6 a little bit. I've added a bunch of games that I thought were missing as well as I changed out the MAME emulator so I can utilize that cocktail cabinet mode that the newer versions of MAME are really good at running and that even includes a lot of these console games. So for example, if I want to play Streets of Rage 2 head to head style with a cocktail mirror, I can. Go ahead and start it up. Now it's probably going to start up in mirror mode, yeah, because I've already played this game like that and it saves my settings for every single game. 
However, if I wanted to do this and change it, I'll just hit the tab mode, bring up my main menu options, come down video options, and then I could change it. If I wanted to do the normal horizontal aspect ratio, I could do it, pixel aspect ratio, and then the cocktail mirror mode. Start a game real quick, just show you what it looks like. Super fun, because like I said, you can sit across one of your friends and play this game head-to-head, co-op style. Of course, everyone's loving Streets of Rage 4 right now, including myself, but this is a nice little throwback. Play the original game that everyone fell in love with, Streets of Rage 2. Not to, not to dismiss Streets of Rage 1, but Streets of Rage 2 obviously is the best out of the original trilogy. Anytime I want to back out, I'm just going to hit my back button. Brings me back to my menu, and I've got all sorts of other great games. Like I said, I got console ports. Um, I'll show you some pinball, and this also works exceptionally well for pinball because we've got a nice vertical play field that we can utilize. So pinball ideally is going to look great, and I can control the flippers using my control panel buttons. Not a big deal. I mean, it's good stuff though. Like. Fills up the entire play field, everything looks great. Vertical orientation. Fun way to play pinball. And add some game depth to your cocktail cabinet with this kind of modification. Already looked good on the 17 inch dock monitor, but it looks even better on this 20 inch monitor. Gotta say, definitely happy I went with the upgrade so I can have a bigger play field overall. So I had a lot of people ask me in my first mod video that I did on this cocktail cabinet, can I actually play true to form cocktail cabinet mode games where player one has the entire screen to himself and once he dies, it rotates the screen 180 degrees and player two can start their game. And yes, you can do that, but there is only certain games that you can do it. So the older games like Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, things that really had an old school cocktail cabinet back in the day, those are the ones you can do this for. So to do it, I'll show you how the menu is a little bit different. And hit our tab button, brings up our options. Now normally we've always been going to video options and we go down and we change cocktail cabinet mode. For these vertical games, these old school games, that doesn't work. As you can see, it just split it up like that and that's not the cocktail cabinet mode we're looking to do. So we're gonna turn it back to our normal three, four aspect ratio and we're gonna back out of this. And what we need to do is come up to the dip switch section. Once we go there, we're gonna come down where it says cabinet and there's upright by default, we're gonna switch it to cocktail cabinet mode. Now this is a key detail because a lot of people do that and they back out of the screen and they're like, wait a minute, it didn't save my changes. You need to reset the game. So I'm gonna hit reset. And now it's gonna tell this game that it's available for the true to form cocktail cabinet mode. So I'm gonna put in a couple coins. I'm gonna start a two player game by pressing player two start. It's gonna start over here with player one and I'll die really quick just to show you how this works. And as soon as I die, you'll notice it's gonna rotate the screen around. Now player two, they start their game. Player two dies, it's gonna rotate the screen yet again. And that is your actual true to form cocktail cabinet mode. And the last game I wanna show you is very interesting because this is one of those things that kind of surprised me that I was able to do. And as quirky as it is, I actually don't mind it. It's a, it's a really unique way to play this game, but once I get to it, downside of having so many games, it takes forever to get to it. But Ultra Street Fighter 4. So you're saying, oh, this is a horizontal game. It's just gonna show up like that. And you're partially right, but wait until we get to the actual gameplay and you see what it looks like. So as you can see, it's cutting off a bit of the text and you're like, oh, well, that doesn't look great. It's filling up the whole screen, but clearly it's cropping some stuff, right? Well, not exactly. Ultra looks normal, horizontal. We got black bars on top and bottom. Then we actually get to the main menu and everything. You're like, okay, now we got the full screen again. Just get into a game super quick. And see the way that everything is going so far, you would think the game is just gonna play like this, but not the case. It actually 
fills up the entire screen vertically without stretching it too much. It, I don't know how or why it does this, but it's a fantastic find and I'm absolutely stoked that I can play Ultra Street Fighter 4 on a vertical monitor and it doesn't look too terrible. I mean, it's super fun to play this way. Obviously, this is only ideal for a one-player setting. It's not going to be good for player two, but to be able to play an advanced game like this on the PC and it not look terrible, in my opinion, um, it's pretty sweet. And that does it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the content. As always, I'll put product links down in the video description box below in case you need to find any of these products to do your own arcade cocktail cabinet mods. If you're new to this channel, I highly recommend you subscribe for more great nerdy content. And I appreciate everybody for watching. It really means a lot.